because it's doubtful whether Isaac Newton ever challenged a colleague to a game of pool. His challenges were to the intellect alone, and none of his expressions was more powerful and moving than his idea of momentum. In his classic work, The Principia, he wrote, the change in motion is proportional to the force impressed. And it is made in the direction of the straight line in which the force is impressed. Newton used the word motion to mean momentum, or in modern terms, the velocity of a body multiplied by its mass. In his own field, Newton chose to express most of his powerful ideas with classical geometry, using geometric figures and ratios between quantities. But he was skilled enough to know that his laws could be expressed as differential equations. According to Newton's second law, the impressed force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. Newton's second law moving, powerful, and everywhere in the universe, an idea with an enormous impact. Interactions around this table are complex subjects of social science. Interactions on this table, however, are purely physical in nature and comparatively easy to explain. Again, according to Newton, a single particle of some definite mass has a momentum equal to m times v. And the change of momentum can be expressed by a differential equation. Force is the rate of change of momentum. Of course, if there are no forces operating, the derivative is equal to zero. Therefore, the vector p is constant which means the motion of the thing itself is constant. A body with no forces acting on it will continue moving at the same speed in a straight line. This is the law of inertia, Newton's first law. But when billiard balls collide, each one applies a momentary force to the other, causing its momentum to change. Here, Newton's third law gets into the action. The forces the balls apply to each other are equal and opposite. The change in momentum of one ball is, therefore, equal and opposite to the change in the momentum of the other. The total momentum of the two balls taken together does not change at all. It's constant. In fact, this new law applies not only to two balls when they strike, but to any number and not only to the billiard balls themselves, but to the very atoms of which they are made. And even in the inner parts of the atoms, the electrons and neutrons and protons, right down to the ultimate constituents of matter itself, momentum is always conserved. But there's an easier way to win the game than to keep track of the countless electrons and protons and neutrons in each billiard ball. Even though each ball is composed of atoms and smaller parts applying equal and opposite forces to each other, each ball behaves as if it were a single body with all of its mass concentrated at a single point. That point's called the center of mass. And in this situation, it's one of the more explosive ideas in physics. The center of mass is the point to focus on when calculating the velocity and acceleration of a compound body. When no net outside force acts on a compound system, no matter what happens to its individual parts, the center of mass continues to move at constant speed in a straight line. In deriving his second law, Newton might have imagined a collection of compound bodies, not necessarily touching each other two bodies of nearly equal mass. Or perhaps better yet, two bodies like the Earth and the Moon. He knew hidden forces were at work up there. Gravity, for example. Conversely, he could imagine that external forces were not at work on such a system. 
then the system wouldn't be accelerated. Its center of mass moves with a constant velocity. If the planet pulls on its moon, then the moon pulls on the planet with an equal but opposite directed force. The vector sum of the two forces and the derivative of the momentum of the bodies are equal to zero. If the derivative of something is equal to zero, that something is constant. And that constant, the sum of the momenta of all the bodies, is a conserved quantity. It always stays the same. This law applies to two bodies or three or more bodies throughout the universe, past, present, and future. <laughs> 